Hey guys, my name is Mel and this is Refurb It with Mel. Uh, the next project we have here is a beautiful dresser. Uh, I did pick up this one for free, so look, anything goes with this project. Um, I'm just sort of coming up with ideas as we go. Uh, first thing first though is to give it a good clean. Um, you can see we've got, there's a door here, some drawers, and this super old school retro looking mirror. So I kind of want to have fun with this piece. Um, to give it a clean, I've just got some water, using a microfiber cloth, and a dustpan brush. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a good clean uh, before we get going with anything. Alright, so I'm just going to show you a bit of the damage. We've got damaged handles. Now I am going to replace the handles, so that's no big deal. Um, we do have some of the laminate lifting up and some water damage, so we'll have to fix that. And same thing is actually on the behind, which you can't quite see at this moment. But um, we'll clean it all up. It's dust, it's animals, it's everything. So let's get this baby clean and go from there. All right, so I'm taking the handles and stuff off the drawers and the doors, and they've got these weird little screws on there, so you don't really need to use a normal traditional screwdriver. I'm actually just using this pliers to um, get on the outside edge of the square little washer that's on there and twist them off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that to the doors and the drawers. Alright, so now I'm going to patch up the holes where the handles were, so you can see them there. I am just using some Dixie Bell mud in the white and just a plain plastic spatula um, to help press it into the holes. So you can see that I've patched up my holes now, including that big one inside. Now I have overfilled them because um, it, there is a bit of a divot around the holes. So I am trying to fill that and when it dries, I'm just going to run the sander over the top of it and it will smooth it all out. All right, so the easiest way to do that is just to put more than you need and you can smooth it out flat. So now we just have to let this dry um, and we're going to leave it for today. So my Dixie mud is all dry and now I am just going to use my palm sander and smooth everything out. So I'm just going to go ahead now and paint my piece. I'm just using my Dixie Bell Boss as a stain blocker um, from Bunnings. I normally just use the 123 Zinnistar. There is an oil-based and a water-based one, so just choose whatever one is going to work best for you. Um, I usually just ask the guys in the store because I have no idea myself and just learn as I go like you are. Um, but I've just run out of the 123, so I do have that, but I thought I would give this a crack um, since everyone online talks about it. So. I'm just using a normal brush. This is again just one of the Pro Renovator cheap ones from Bunnings, and uh, we'll go from there.
Right, so now we are going to go ahead with the main painting of the piece. Uh, first of all, I am going to reattach the, the main door here. Um, I did take it off just because it was a bit damaged, so I wanted to fix that and um, just get some new hinges and screws because they were a bit old and rusted through. So I'm going to go and reattach that um, so we can go ahead with our whole design. Right, so I'm going to mark up my design. Um, here is my design that I've got um, in place that I'd like to duplicate on here. Uh, I am just using some pencil, rubber, uh, some painter's tape, um, I've got a small measuring tape and I'm just going to use this as my ruler um, just because it covers the whole space and it will make sure that I have an absolutely straight line across the front of the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that up now. Alright, here I'm just taping off the areas that I want to paint. So you just have to go a section at a time. So tape off the areas leaving exposed where you want to paint. Give that a couple of coats and when that dries, you take the tape off, move it over to the next section and start painting again. So I'm just going along to all the doors and drawers here and taping off the first sections that I'm going to paint. Okay, so it's all taped up and ready to go for my first color. Um, I am going to do a little sealer on the edges of the tape so that I can try and get a nice crisp line. Um, I am just gonna try using the spray clear coat um, just cause obviously it'll dry a lot quicker and then I can get painting. Uh, look, I don't know if it's gonna work and I've not watched anyone do it before, but um, we'll give it a crack and see what happens. Okay, so I've just given it a spray. Uh, while I am waiting for that to dry, just a little bit I'm going to work on my colors. Um, so I got this burnt sort of red look. I might add a bit of brown in it to make it a little darker and a little more earthy. Um, I do want to make an orange. Uh, so I've got some yellow, which I might mix into that, see how that looks. And I have some of the Dulux metallic paint. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not yet, but uh, I just want to see what it looks like. So as I've been going along, I've just been referring to my image and seeing where I want my colours. Um, look, it's no real big deal what colours go where. I've just sort of done this up, so I'm just working with the colours that I have. So I'm going to go ahead with my sort of burnt red, burnt brown and fill it in the first colour. Now I'm just using a mist tint from the, what am I going to say, it is a Torman's Burnt Brick. So it is just a sample pot. It's only $2 from Bunnings. I usually just buy them when they're on clearance in hopes that I'll use them one day. Um, you can use, you can make your own chalk paint. Um, I don't have any of that stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and just use it as is and uh, see how it looks. Oh, look at that colour. That is going to look nice. So first colour is on, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to do two coats. So I'm going to leave it taped up, let it dry um, so that we can get a second coat on there and it can look much smoother. In between I am going to mix up my next colour um, and see if I can work out a colour that I like. I'm just going to custom mix this one by using paints that I already have and mixing them together until I get a colour that I like. Now I've actually made up more of a burnt red. Um, just because the colour that I've got here is a little bit more orange and I could probably use that alongside this red paint. So I'm actually going to go over the colour that I just did in this colour because I uh, quite like it. So all I did for that is actually mix some of, I had a red paint, so I mixed some red paint with my burnt orange that I used on there and added a bit of black until I was happy um, with the colour that I got here. Right, so I'm letting my paint dry now. Um, I thought I had an orange, but I don't. So I'm actually using this metallic paint that I 
got for on sale. It is the metallic paint from the Dulux range and it is like a soft gold. So I thought I would use that and see what she looks like. So first coat is on. Like I said, I'm going to leave the tape on because I'm going to do a second coat. Then we'll peel it off, move it around so we can get our other arrows going. All right, here I have decided to retape my small drawer. I did originally have the straps coming from the wide angle here, but just compared to the others, it didn't quite match. So I've just done another stripe in the middle here. Um, that's dry and I've just covered it up because I want to get rid of these bits that I no longer need. Uh, I am just using some steel wool. Uh, I'm just going to rub over the paint to try and get rid of it and smooth it out. And I'm just going to go over it with the black so you won't even see it. Uh, like I said, this is my first time, you know, it's a little bit of trial and error and if you do stuff up, look, you can always go back and fix it. It's a little time consuming, but it is worth it in the end. So I've just smoothed it out with the steel wool and now I'm going to go over it with some black paint. The paint's all dry now, so I've taken the tape off and as you can see, I'm just moving the tape over now and re-taping so that I can paint the, the new sections. So I have my other sections taped up and ready to go now. So it's just a matter of taping off where you want to paint, waiting for it to dry, then moving your tape over to the next section that you want to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and do those now. So I've pulled my tape off here and realized I've just missed a little bit there of the red. So look, it's all good. Just retape it um, where you need the color to be covered up like I have there. And look, I'm just repainting the black over straight over the top. And um, when it dries, you won't even notice. Alright, so the first two doors and drawers are done. I'm just waiting for the black to dry on that one and we can make some tracks on the last drawer. And then, so now I'm just going to tape up the last two components of the door and um, paint that and we're ready to go. Alright, next up we are going to remove all the other tape um, to free up the top here and then I'm going to look at what colour or stain I want to do for the tops. So I've got all the tape off here. As you can see, I've got a little bit of black in a couple of places so I'm just going to quickly give it a little sand to get rid of that and we'll continue with the colour. Alright, so now we're going to work on the back of this piece. Now as you can see, some of this veneer is no good and coming off. So I am actually just going to be pulling it off, see how easy it comes off there, to uncover the timber behind it. Sorry, it's a bit dark, I'm just in my garage. I've just got a little spatula um, to use as well to help me scrape it off. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll show you what it looks like. All 
All right, so it's all clean and clear from the veneer. That's my big pile of rubbish. Um, now you might ask, why didn't I unscrew the back? But look, the screws in here are so old. Um, there was no way we could get them out. I tried, my partner tried, his brother tried, and we tried again and then they just would not come out. So they were either like really stuck in there, glued in there, I don't know. And I don't have the tools um, available to me to get them out. So look, I've just used that spatula and got rid of all of the backing here and I'm happy with the result. So I've just pre-drilled my holes and just screwed in just a screw in there so that I can actually open the drawers and start on the inside. So I'm just going ahead and doing the same to this one here. It's time to paint the inside of this. I'm just painting it black and I'm just using the same spray paint, um, the squirts in the flat black, just because it's way easier to get into all the nooks and crannies. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to clear coat the top now. I've taped it all off and I'm just using the Cabot's Clear in the uh, satin and I'm just using a sponge brush to apply it. So just make sure you tape everything off because it can run and um, yeah, you might do, I think I'm going to do about three coats just to make sure it's extra durable. Okay, so I've got all my drawers out and I'm going to paint the inside of them now. I'm just going to paint it black to match the exterior and I'm just using the Canterbury Blue in the Black Sambuca. So I've decided to add some embellishment to the side of the drawers here. I'm just using a stencil roll. It is from Redesign Stick and Style. So basically it just comes in a roll and when you unroll it, the backing is quite sticky. So you just press it against the side of the drawer and it will stay there nicely for you. Um, I've just got a little brush and I'm using my fingers as well to dab in some gold wax. Uh, the wax is the metallic white gold from Finnebar Art. Um, it goes on really nicely and as you'll see in a moment here when I peel it off it um, adds quite a nice look to the side here. So now I'm going to go over all the drawers and I'm going to redo the tops again with the Cabot's Clear. Um, for the tops I'm just going to use a little bit of really fine steel wool um, just to rough it up a bit in between coats and I'm just going to go over the drawers and the side if you can see that there to maintain that pattern. Now I'm just using a plastic um, spatula to stir this up. So they say stir, do not shake. Um, if you shake it, it'll make little bubbles and they can sort of remain as you paint. So I'm just giving it a bit of a stir. And again, I'm just using my um, sponge applicator brush because like I said, I find it the easiest and quickest way to apply the clear coat. So when you put your clear coat on, you'll notice that it has a bit of a milky sheen to it. Now, look, don't worry, don't freak out. That's just how it sort of goes on, okay? It will dry clear. So if we go back to the first one that I've done, you can see that it's pretty much all dry and it's much clearer. So look, like I said, don't freak out. It is all part of the process. Okay, so the piece is complete. It's all dry and ready to go. The last thing is the handles, which I'm just waiting for them to arrive via the post. 
I ordered them online because I just couldn't find anything in store that I liked. So look, they're still on the way. Once they get here, I'll pop them on and show you what it looks like. But until then, I'll just have to wait.